As a composer, many years, my biggest goal was to write that very masterpiece, the piece that would guarantee my position among those legendary composers. A few years ago, I kind of gave up. Uh, actually, I became working on something totally different, and that was I became convinced that the biggest goal an artist can achieve is to make himself superfluous, to become redundant. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Um, I brought you a few pictures. Ah, look. It's my daughter. She's just uh, one year old. And uh, on her birthday, she received this book. And there it goes. Well, I'm supposed to explain her, this is a cow. Um, although, actually, it has hardly anything to do with a cow. It's not big, it's not warm, it's not eating, there isn't coming things out of the back, uh, not drippings from the, from the mouth. Uh, it smells different, the size is very, very, very different. My task is to tell her, this is a cow, and, oh, there we go, goat, chicken, pig. <laughs> this is not a pig, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I think there is one reason why we can call this a pig, and that's the curly tail. Yeah. It's enough, we just see the curly tail, okay, it's a pig. Um, we I, I will have to teach my daughter it's a pig because it has a curly tail. It's enough. And we learn to read the information that comes to us, just little signals, and to draw our conclusions. And that makes life very, very easy. For example, I can walk in the street and I can pick a car, jump inside and ask, bring me to the railway station, because I know it's a taxi. Or I can talk to someone and say, can you bring me coffee? Because I saw she is the waitress. This is really easy. It makes our life go very fluent, and it goes very quick. Um, actually, if I want to know about what's happening in the world, in 10 minutes, I can do a scan. I can just check some websites or go to the newspaper. 10 minutes is enough. I have an impression of the world. I believe we, as we are here, we have become virtuosos in reading these codes, reading these little signals like the curly tail. So we are virtuosos in reading the codes of society. And it becomes very fluent and very easy. Well, I told you I'm a composer. It's terrible uh, because I have to compete with all compo composers of history. Uh, it's tough composition, uh, tough competition. Um, also, I have to compete with many people who organize entertaining things. Every even every night in The Hague, you can choose of dozens of concerts, theater plays, movies, and so on. I have to compete. So I make a newsletter, I have a Facebook page, I tweet sometimes in order to draw attention, to make people uh, yeah, uh, notice me or my work. Um, I started to compose larger and larger events. Um, involving many musicians, going to weird locations, or just making music on a place like in the streets. I created a music composition in a shipyard. Uh, we banged the ships and we played music together. Also on the beach, while percussion players made like a dialogue with the sea. Or actually to give my uh, music meaning, I went to locations like a place in conflict, difficult places, to bring my music to places in need or so. I was, for example, in Cyprus. And there, you might know, there is the conflict between Turkish and Greek part. Uh, there is a capital that's divided by a buffer zone full of mines and barbed wire. And I wanted to create a piece of music where actually these musicians being placed on rooftops could make a unity, could make some nice piece of music, because 
sound can travel. And so I was working that for a year to build a large composition on the rooftops of Nicosia. Let me show you a short impression. Here there is the saxophone player. He is nothing. Uh, some sound? Oh yeah, there's it coming. The poet who puts his poetry to the other side. Then came a response. And on the rooftops, balconies in the street, around 400 participants, students, children, choir members participated. It was so big, actually, when it was over, after about one hour, I was confused. It didn't really work out the way I intended. I wrote it all down. I yeah, did rehearsals with them. But when they were on their rooftops, some of them started improvising. <laughs> Others <laughs> started yeah, to, to do different things or there were silences. And I was so worried, like on my score, someone was supposed to play and it was just silent. So it was definitely not my masterpiece. So, uh, and also the audience, some people came to me and they told me, what was it? <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't have the budget to make proper advertising, so to explain everyone, this is the purpose, this is the goal, this is the reason, no. People were there, they were puzzled. What's the message? Why are you on a rooftop? Is this music or sounds? It doesn't sound classic, it's not jazz or rock. Actually, yeah, they didn't, they couldn't grab it like that. But also some people came to me and they said, well, this was the first time in my life that I came to this spot so close to the buffer zone, close to the enemy lines, and I was not full of anger or sadness or bitterness because of the conflict. Actually, few moments I forgot about it and the moment that it went silent I was listening and I just heard some sounds that actually were from the other side just maybe some sound of some chickens or some traffic or some a workshop there people were making something and that touched them a lot because usually they don't come there with an open mind no it's a place full of very strong symbols so it's very hard to be open. Then I thought that maybe the, the biggest achievement of that composition, of that whole project, was to confuse people, to make openness, and um, yeah, to spend time to relate to such a painful or such a charged place in an open way. And there I realized that an artist can create confusion and confusion can make openness among the people. You can choose to make a perfect artwork and then you can communicate that and the audience can be very passive. They can just enjoy it or they can buy it or it's like an object. But when it's confusing, when it's open, when it's not perfect, people become more active, kind of a co-creation their mind. What is it? What is it about? They ask questions about it. And when you're open, you become curious. And this curiosity is leading towards contact. And contact is essential in a place like Cyprus to yeah, make steps towards peace, towards any resolution. So I felt that that had much more impact than if I were there just conducting and if everything would gone perfect, <laughs> then uh, I would have avoided the confusion. Well, um, my daughter, she can spend 
15 minutes with just a stone that she finds in the park. And because she doesn't know that it's called a stone and it's actually worthless. For her, she has not the word stone yet. So it's full of mystery. She's investigating, it takes her 15 minutes. I might soon teach her the word stone. And then she might think, ah, it's just a stone. This will speed up her life. Uh, in a way, it has, uh, has brought all of us up to speed. But at a certain point, you become kind of stuck in your patterns. You yeah, perceive just the outside world, just the symbols, the surface that come to you. And at that point, artists have a great tool in hand. Something that is really valuable and that might be needed on places like Cyprus, but also in our own society. Uh, in Cyprus, I maybe did something that politicians, soldiers or activists couldn't. And make things moving, make things open. But actually, it wasn't me who did it, because I was out of control. It just happened. So, please take this tool, steal that tool from the artists. Take it. Um, don't let artists uh, lock up our curiosity into a gallery or to a concert hall. Uh, take it out of that art context. Become an artist yourself, maybe undercover, and see how to make artists, artists redundant in this world. Good, thank you. <laughs>